Welcome back to the Herbalist Hour. Today, I'm really excited to have on Robin Rose Bennett. I've really admired her work for a very long time now. Uh, so welcome to the show, Robin. Uh, thanks, Mason. And I love to tell you that just that moment, a little hummingbird flew right by my window. <laughs> Perfect timing. Welcome to the Herbalist Hour. This is where community gather, merging the power of people and the flowers, the sweets and the bitter to the salty, the sour. Oh, mommy, it's time for the Herbalist Hour. I don't know if you know this or not, but I first met you, I want to say, at the Portland Plant Medicine Gathering, and you did the keynote. This was back in 2014, and you actually signed your book uh, for me. The Gift of Healing Herbs, one of your books. Uh, and actually, at the time, I was having herbalists sign their books to my daughter. So this is like one of 30 books probably that uh, Amelia has. So it says, to Amelia Sage. Amelia uh, Sage. Yeah, I that's right. You. Of course I do. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks for that. Uh, you have a, a newer book coming out, which we're going to talk about a little later on. But for now, I'd like to get to know Robin a little bit more. Hey, Robin, what were you like as a kiddo? Ah, I was extremely shy. I know, it's hard to believe, right? Totally. <laughs> I, I was extremely shy and very um, kind of held in, really self-conscious. Mm. And maybe part of it was because I was um, like old when I was young. Like I just had no wings and things that I had no context for and no idea what to do with. But having said that, People from childhood have told me, I didn't know you were so insecure. I didn't know you were so shy. So, you know, I'm not sure how I came off, but that's how I felt inside. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I just kind of loved to play. I loved games. I loved kickball and tetherball and, and you know, um, all that. I liked playing. And now I now I like playing again. <laughs> it's all come full circle. Do you think that you became less shy because you felt like you had this passion to teach people uh so you felt compelled that you had to be kind of more outgoing partially and you know and partially just gaining experience and beginning to be less obsessed with what anyone thought about me or allowing myself to make mistakes and not being so harsh um you know on myself and, and then I remember vividly at one point just decide I was traveling and I'd been traveling with my best friend. I was 19 and I was still pretty shy then and still pretty insecure then. And I, um, I she, and then she went home and I decided to continue traveling by myself. And I thought, oh my God, I'm not going to make a single friend. I'm not going to talk to anyone. <laughs> and I remember very consciously making a decision to pretend that I wasn't shy. Mm -hmm. Like no one knows me. And so that was kind of my first experiment in stepping into like a bigger, a, a fuller expression of myself. And also I got into theater and that helped immensely, right? Because I'm putting myself out there. Um, but so all of the above, but I think I could net it down to saying um, the commitment to become my real self kind of brought me you know, brought me out. And at the same time, honestly, I love, I still love alone time. I love quiet. I love silence. Um, so I, I am a both and like, like most of us are, you know, I could definitely re relate. So do you kind of ascribe to the whole fake it till you'll make it uh, type of philosophy then? Sometimes if it yeah. expands your um, if it expands your story and allows you to come more fully into yourself, then yeah. Yeah. It, it, you know, even things like if someone says, oh, it's so, here's a common one, right? It's really hard for me to ask for help. Mm. And like they're a place like fake it till you make it can be really, help. pretend it's easy. Pretend it's a natural thing or a one thing I love. And I learned this, uh, I got this first idea from astrologer Caroline Casey. She said, yet, mm. or, or until now, right? It's, it's been, it's hard. It's been hard for me to ask for help until now, right? So whatever combination of those things that helps you to more fully be, be who you really are and less hung up really less hung up on 
trying to be something you think you need to be to fit in or trying to be god is forbid perfect uh <laughs> or um you know or just yeah just being overly concerned with the opinions of others and trying to fit in it's more about claiming yourself is so important yeah and then well, you naturally nice. find where you belong so that comes back to what you said about finding like my path finding where i belonged right that obviously that does help everything i too was a incredibly shy person and you know, for the longest time, I was like, I'm going to have a podcast. And then I did have a podcast. But for the first five years of my podcast, all of the episodes were other people's recordings, uh, mainly because I had this like um, insecurity about actually putting myself out there and being a host because I never looked at myself as like, say, a host per se. I was always more like the behind the behind the scenes type of person because, you know, I was very insecure and whatnot. And I was like, the only way to get experience at this thing called interviewer is by actually doing it. So uh, I'm I'm so thankful that I finally actually ended up doing it. And I guess in some sense of the word, I was faking it till I make it. But like, I'm having more fun now with Herb Rally than I ever have playing yeah, host. You are good at it. And <laughs> oh, thanks. you, you know, that you, you know, I think it's harmful to push ourselves, but it's, healing to stretch ourselves mm, perfect yeah well said yeah, thanks so at 19 you said you were uh you know in a new location trying to make friends and whatnot you started doing theater and whatnot when did you start your um like say green witch path or when did you start getting into herbalism and whatnot mm -hmm. well interestingly i started getting into herbal medicine let's see i was already deeply into like my uh spiritual path and I was pretty young still when I started herbal medicine. I started looking for help with herbs when I was about, let's see, 20, I think. Yeah, I was about maybe 19, 20. It was when I came home from those world travels. I went, I, I lived, I grew up on the East Coast. I moved out to Northern California uh, to continue uh, college. I had been to other colleges uh before my travels and then came out west uh and that's and there i was in the mecca of northern california and everything <laughs> right and so i went to my first herbalist and that really is the thing that started me even though what uh, my experience with the herbs that i took and he gave was they were undrinkable they tasted awful <laughs> um, and yet you know there was that little magic thing happening that that led me to the next thing which led me to the next thing which led me so and it's been unfolding ever since yeah ever since then so did you end up going to the california school of herbal studies i did not i was at university of california in santa cruz then gotcha. and then when i graduated it was a degree in creative writing actually because really i am a writer who's also an herbalist. I'm not an herbalist who's writing books only because I wanna get my herbal info out. Like the writing is just, if not as much my soul work, more my soul work. It's mm -hmm. it's really, a, a yeah, it's, it's what I, I must do. And, uh, you know, as far as being an herbalist, I must be with the plants and make my medicines and this and that. As far as teaching about them, it's, it's well, who knows, right? It, it's been a beautiful <laughs> path to, to date. Um, but the writing is really the the heart and soul um, central to me. Um, and then the, I'm sorry, I got lost in my own uh, thing, <laughs> asking me about teaching. No, what did you ask? Oh, me? just like when you kind of got into herbalism and that that whole path. Right, yeah. right. So that's what I was going to say when I um, I moved back from the West Coast. And I actually, uh, I think I got the correspondence course from Michael Tierra and I I uh I had a wonderful uh stint with um Dr. John Moore uh the hobo herbologist of Harlem uh he was he was quite a character and I remember having I so I did my first 10 years of as an herbal teacher in downtown Manhattan right that's where the nickname the green witch of New York came from right? That has stuck, even though it's been decades <laughs> I've lived in Manhattan. Um, but 
but yeah, so so I was an herbalist in and taking people into Central Park and Prospect Park and Inwood Park. And really, even I did my very first weed walk uh, around like a square city block from where I lived on 14th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. For those listening who know New York City, you'll know this is not like a a plant laden part of the city. This is a very trafficked commercial, no trees, or at least it was then, right? But I did one square loop and found, I don't know, 30 medicinal plants. At one point I remember, um, and, and you know, speaking about confidence and stretching into yourself, honestly, I don't know when I would have ever taught my first medicine class if my best friend hadn't come, Lisa flew in from Los Angeles and literally wrote the flyers and addressed the envelopes with me and said, you are doing this, you are sending <laughs> out. And that's how I came to teach my very first class in my apartment in Manhattan. And I always remember this, that it snowed. I was like, really, it snowed. I have a plant walk plan. And I remember taking a paper cup, like a coffee cup from the diner and like going to the diner, getting the cup and digging out where I had seen chickweed the, you know, when I was scouting the walk uh, days before. And there it was in full flower under the snow. And everybody was like, wow. <laughs> so, yeah, so fun, you know, fun. And, and so, yeah, I really I really did my first 10 years as an herbalist in the heart of the city. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the Green Witch of Manhattan, so I'm glad you brought that up. And I also got to say, Lisa's a good friend. She helped you stretch outside of your comfort zone. I did want to ask you, I've never heard of this um, hobo herbalist of Harlem. Can you tell us more about that person? Yeah, he was well known in his own you know, community, and he was a, a, a guy from the South, I believe. And he had a store that was famous... Um, back in the day called the wisdom tree. And I think it was in Georgia, but then it uh, he opened it or he and others opened it that I'm not sure in Harlem, New York. And we're now talking about like um, in the eighties, it may have been open before that, but that's when I became aware it was in the mid eighties. So I've been doing this a little while now, Mason. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, and so Dr. John Moore, and uh, I have even some of his, not books, but like big, thick booklets. And he kind of went all over in, 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 in terms of, you know, everything from iridology to herbal to very spiritual. And um, yeah, it was, it was wonderful. It was wonderful. And then it was Susan Weed who taught me to, that I could learn from the plants themselves. Right. So that is uh, all of these, you know, formative influences uh, are very important and probably most important. And I would venture to guess you agree, but I'll ask you, um, is that the kinship, the kinship uh, is with the plants and through the plants with all of nature has been the most beautiful, unexpected, side effect, if you will, <laughs> of coming to herbs for for physical healing and just having this whole world of relationship open, um, it's extraordinary, right? Well said. And yeah, it just reminds me of getting into herbs in my early 20s. My first relationship with herbs and herbalism was in uh, dried, cut and sifted herbs and mason jars on on shelves, which is great. You know, I think that's an intro for a lot of people. But it wasn't until I took my first herbal apprenticeship where I, we actually went into the old growth forest in Oregon with, at the Columbine School of Botanical Studies. And we, you know, we sat down with the flowers with our loops and looked at tiny flowers in the old growth forest and you start seeing through like the quote unquote wall of green and you start developing these strong relationships with all these plants and their natural habitat. Uh, it totally blew my mind. And like you said, it's extraordinary. It's, it's so much beyond a relationship with uh, uh, dried cut and sifted herbs and mason jars. <laughs> in mason's jars. Mason's yeah, that's right. right. I have yeah, an appropriate I mean, name. I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it, it's true. And even when I came back from my first apprenticeship, I got a job in a in a well known herb shop in the city, Aphrodisia Herbs. They also had like a big mail order um, kind of place in Brooklyn. Um, but I was in the West Village in Greenwich Village, 
Greenwich Village, Greenwich Village, ah, whichever you want to say. And, uh, and, and I remember like going up to the herbs in the jars and whispering to them, if you weren't harvested with respect and gratitude, mm. you know, I'm sorry and know that I am receiving you with that. And I thought, well, I mean, that was, you know, that was kind of a great practice uh, uh, to just start that process of connecting where I could. And I did come home from the apprenticeship and like go out to the parks and say, oh my God, I didn't learn anything. Everything just looks green. How am I ever gonna know one plant from another? And it takes time. Yeah, absolutely. Right? It takes time. It takes time and dedication and devotion. But again, I, I came into herbs really just looking for answers to health problems or at least consciously right because 10 years into being a practicing herbalist and herbal teacher i learned that my mother's grandmother esther had been a renowned herbalist wow. for her i presume for mostly her russian jewish community in brooklyn though i don't know that for a fact that it was limited um i'm just that's an educated guess but when I learned that she had been that, I said, oh, you mean she helped the family? And my great uncle Max said, no, no, there would be lines waiting for her. I'm like, oh, wow. That's awesome. Yeah, this was 10 years in. So I love that our, just this little bit of our conversation, yeah. what we're saying to people listening is that you could be in the streets of Manhattan and you could be in the old growth forest, right? Up in Oregon. Yeah. And you can enter into the this ever expansive kinship uh, with the natural world through these generous beings we call plants. I just interviewed Asia Suler. I'm not sure if you're aware of her work or not, but um, I am. Yeah. Yeah. So she was talking about also living in New York City, and she would hang out with the trees at the city park and uh, start to create altars around the trees, and people would be fascinated by that and come up to her and talk to her about it and then start maybe sometimes even participating in it. And yeah, like you said, no matter where you're at, you could uh, build relationships with the nature around you. Yeah. She gave me a great compliment a short while ago. She told me that my book, Healing Magic, Greenwich mm -hmm. Guidebook to Conscious Living, helped her know that it was possible for her to become this brilliant. Well, she didn't say that. I'm saying that. <laughs> she is um, though. Yeah, she is that very much know, so. That she is. So I was very, very um, touched and honored, really, to receive that uh, that compliment. And in fact, she endorsed uh, the pocketbook, the new book that you'll talk about whenever you get to that. Yeah, we're 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 chugging along here. We're almost there, actually. I was, first, I actually was hoping you could de define what a green witch is. Uh, well, I can define what a green witch is to me. Oh, please, yeah. <laughs> Well said. Okay. So a green witch is a person um, who is uh, engaged with the magic of nature, particularly through the green world, through the plant people, the trees, the plants, the seaweeds, the mosses. And so a green witch can be an herbalist, right? I mean, I think, first of all, I just think it's an affectionate term for an herbalist. Uh, a yeah. green witch. And it's been applied probably more to women, but it's for anybody. And, yeah. um, but it's, it's one who not only knows that, that every, every one, can we say in nature is sentient, but that is also like in engaged with that sentience. And um, I like to think that a green witch can be an herbalist, but a green witch could also enact their magic through their art right or be a you know they could be a green witch doctor or they could be a green witch writer or a green witch you know gardener anything right so it's not just an herbalist it's it's more open than that i think so that's how i see it love it well, it's a nice segue because, yeah, you did. Well, you are when we're releasing this episode next week. Uh, your book will be out. And dear listener, please go pre-order uh, because pre-order book pre-ordering books really helps the authors out. So uh, Robin Rose Bennett has a new book coming out. Uh, it's called A Green Witch's Pocket Guide. Did I get that right? Pocket, Pocket book. book of Wisdom, um, which looks 
little fascinating life tips. Thank you. Big yeah, absolutely. Book, book of wisdom, big little life tips. Absolutely. And I kind of want to go in depth. There's a few excerpts that I got off of uh, online, and I was hoping we could kind of expound upon that. But before we do that, maybe talk a little bit about the book, the inspiration to writing it. And I also would hope that you could throw in the definition of what bibliomancy is, because I thought that was really neat how you put that in the intro. Okay, awesome. Awesome. So the inspiration for writing the book is really understanding through my work with so many people over so long that um, that we need tools, we need guidance uh, in order to navigate um, this thing called life on earth and particularly now in this time that is so pivotal um, and so evolutionary right i really i think of it as the evolutionary chaos of now and when you're in a time of chaos because transformation is in progress which is messy like a birth is messy um then you need maps so what i thought about and and did over i don't know maybe seven years or so of of writing it was call down to the to the essence the teachings that have withstood this the test of time for me and that as i've shared them with others they've helped so many others so they're both from my original spiritual work that i did for about 10 years before i really became an herbal teacher um and from the herbal world so it's earthy and it's 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 transcendent and imminent imminent meaning referring to the the spirit in everything that's manifest that's another beautiful word um that editors kept correcting correcting <laughs> when i wrote they said do you mean imminent like it's just about to happen i'm like no imminent with an a means mm in within the stone within the dandelion so the pocketbook is like a, a four by six book because i love to have a little book that i can open like every day and ask for a message about something or just like general guidance for the day guidance for this conversation whatever it is and that's bibliomancy so i've practiced bibliomancy for a far longer than i knew it had a name <laughs> right. And so that's what it is what I just described. You take any book, you open it up asking for a message. I mean, some people maybe get into a deep state of meditation before that. Maybe other people just open it um, and yeah, and see what's there for you. And I have found with the pocketbook, it's been uncanny. And that's like so much fun. Right. It's whether I've used it for a client or in a class or again for a conversation online like this. So that's i think i answered your question so so it's you know Absolutely. Oh, i didn't say it's a beautifully illustrated i was gonna ask you about the uh, illustrator yeah yeah gail stoughton is a local to me artist um and she just does the most beautiful kind of shamanic uh paintings and i had her do this very 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 simply yeah. um in in pencil so they're black and white, um, but they're so evocative, like, because each page has like basically a one or two lines of wisdom and then a little bit of explanatory paragraph. I wasn't going to do the explanatory, but then people I showed the book to early on said, you have to, you, have to. <laughs> you must, you, you yeah. can't just leave it at that. Um, people need a little bit more. And so, you know, what I also saw, uh, Mason, was that even like I started this before the height of COVID hit and all of that, but I saw that these are the things that have stood the test of time through really difficult, difficult things through personal losses in my life that were devastating. Um, my partner um, got ill and passed about 10, 11 years ago out of, out of the blue. Um, and then, you know, through the COVID, height of COVID years, I wish I could say through the years as if it was over, but we we're, we're, don't know yet what's going on. Um, these are these teachings have held up, just like herbalism has held up in a big way, right, through COVID, through helping people regain health. Um, yeah, so I wanted to share them because they work. They, they work if we work with them. 
Just a quick break from the show to thank our presenting sponsor, Oshala Farm. Oshala Farm is a beautiful and vibrant certified organic herb farm based in Southern Oregon, where they grow and sell over 80 different plant species. The founders, Elise and Jeff Higley, have been longtime friends, so I highly trust their growing methods and ethics. You'll love the potency and vibrancy of all the herbs they have to offer. To learn more and purchase their herbs and other organic goods, head to oshalafarm.com. So thanks once again to Oshala Farm for sponsoring the Herbalist Hour. Now back to the show. Enjoy. That's one thing I love about your teachings is you you always infuse story, but then also like uh, like your philo- philosophy and, and everything um, into your into your writing as well. So it's not just like you know uh, herbalism at its you know uh, simplest form, but yeah, I always love hearing your stories and everything. So um, thank you for sharing. Yeah, and and you said. Um, you said that readers were hoping you could, uh, what would you say, like have the initial sentence, but then even more of an explanatory uh, paragraph or so afterwards. So what we're going to do here, if you don't mind, I'll read the opening sentence and then the paragraph, and then maybe you could even talk a little bit more about that. So we'll go even deeper. Okay. That, that'd be great. And again, I got these off the internet. So um, this one is um, open. To, oh, and you know what else I was going to say for those uh, watching on YouTube, I'll try to get some of the pictures of some of the beautiful artwork and throw it up on the screen as well. Okay. Um, yeah. Like I'll in post post edit. That. Yep. Totally. I can help you with that. Yeah. Awesome. So this first one here is uh, open to magic. As you open yourself to seek and discover the magic of life, you'll find it is everywhere. You'll become a magnet for helpful synchronicity. Magic will find you. Uh huh. So you want a story that goes with that? Yeah, or maybe just expound upon it a little bit more. Um, I really like that one. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, um, any number of years ago, I don't know how many, I metaphorically went through every dictionary and crossed out the word coincidence and decided I no longer believe in it. I don't Mm. believe in random coincidence. I think it's synchronicity. And the more, you know, if you're we're we're rather been rather shamed out of a um animistic worldview right like if your next door neighbor um sees you talking to a bird you might be embarrassed right or right? we've been shamed out of this living relationship so and yet if we do as we do open like to me reality is magic right so as we open to the magic of reality uh we become more open to perceive it right one of my first teachers used to say if i hadn't uh, believed it i wouldn't have seen it right because (laughs) we we have this great ability to filter out what what messes with our worldview right unless we consciously challenge that So, but just, I do have a little story, an example. I really wanted to go out dancing uh, this past weekend because this band I loved, Uncle Shoehorn's Funky Band, was playing. (laughs) And nobody I knew wanted to go out dancing. And finally, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go by myself. And that took a little bit of, you know, courage on my part to go out dancing by myself. It was a Saturday night. And I went, and within a short while, not only had I met some cool uh, people, but I met somebody who was doing uh, plant healing work with um, kids on the spectrum mm. in a school about an hour and a half south of me, right? And, you know, just like a, a kindred, basically, yeah. right? And so I think that's opening to magic, like just starting to being daring something and then talking to somebody and but it could be, you know, it could be anything. Does that, uh, you know, give a That's little fantastic. Context? Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Uh, the real world in quotes is found in nature's ongoing cycles of transformation. Uh, and then you go on, get real, wherever you live, attuned to the underlying real reality of nature, everything and everyone is coming to be and passing away, cycling the birth growth decay death and rebirth become aware of the rhythms of the seasons the rising and setting of the sun the waxing and waning of the moon the tides of the oceans yeah and so this goes back to like being a green witch in new york city or any other right major city right is you want to you can still look up and find the moon right you can look down and find the 
artemisia growing up through the cracks in the sidewalk or where you, you know, white sage, whatever it is where you live. And, um, you know, people often, again, here's this issue of shaming, um, you know, or, or scorning, uh, you know, yeah, it, it's just what keeps coming to me about this, like, oh, get real, you yeah. know, get real, even if it could be, you know, what do you mean taking, uh, you know, bones that can help you if you have a respiratory infection, get real, you need an antibiotic, or get real, why would you think that if you um, ask, you know, whatever you call spirit, right? God, goddess, all that is, whatever, the creator, Tao. Mm. If you ask for, um, you know, an opportunity you're looking for to come, if you think that makes any difference, right? Whatever it is. So, um, yeah, yeah. So as you are getting real, it, you know, it also makes you more, I have found it makes, has made me more, um, resilient to stay in touch with the truth of nature the seasons the cycles of watching how the you know spring turns to summer or how the moon goes from full bright back to dark um, because i'm part of nature and i don't think that everything that's true for me is true for everyone but certain essential things like that are yeah essential things like that are true for everyone it's still that's the real world yeah. right not the world of commerce or the world of you know dominator culture uh thinking that's not the real world um you know it, and so those of us who can see that have also a responsibility i feel to speak to it to hold the vision of the possible by getting back into what's real What's really real? Well said. All right, one more, if you're okay. game. All right. I am. Uh, this is maybe my favorite one. Uh, you are sacred. There is only one you. You matter. You count. You add to the whole. The world would not be the same without you in it. Yeah. This is such a vital, vital message for people. It doesn't matter the the sphere of your influence, whether you are really just home in your family or or out wide speaking to millions of people. You matter. Everybody matters. And I I often liken it, Mason, to a wheel. Mm. And we're each a spoke right on the wheel and without all the spokes the wheel wobbles the wheel doesn't turn as well and i i know i mean in the in the deepest knowing place in myself i know that the more of us who remember and live as who we really are um the more we come together and can shift the destructive you know, systems into new, ancient, new ways of being on the planet that are based in, in caring for everyone, right? And when I say everyone, I don't just mean the humans either, right? Yeah. Caring for everyone, the mountains, the waters, the insects, the land. Um, I mean, death is part of life. It doesn't mean everything has to stay alive forever. That's not the, that's not the point. But if you know you matter, then you will naturally come to express your gifts and we all need them we need everybody like waking up that's what it's time for and i did a bibliomancy just for fun while you were doing yours i opened to hmm. because it so fits with this last one relax into becoming your authentic self hmm. be yourself expressing who you really are inside will bring you greater contentment and benefit those with whom you share yourself. And, you know, we live in a, in cultures where we're really, um, we're really told to, uh, like compare ourselves all the time. Yeah. And it's just such an energy suck and it's such a joy suck to do that. Right. Because you're not that other person. But you do have your own magic, your own path to walk. And I love how the plants 
help with that because the plants just do. They know who they are. We take them into us or we sit with the oak tree or the dandelion and they help us know who we are. And we can start anywhere. We can start with, you know, with, you know, drinking pine because, uh, because, you know, we have a little cough, right? But it's spirit medicine is still going to be translated to us. And pine is also the tree of peace, right? So it's going to help us come to more inner peace. The plants do their thing, however we enter into it. I really love that last message. Yeah, it reminds me of when I was younger and say shy, I used to wish to be older, which I, I don't know, I can't quite recall, but I feel like you said something kind of similar. But I remember thinking I can't wait to be an old person because I'd give less shits uh, because I gave a lot of shits. Um, I was incredibly anxious all the time. Um, and now that I am getting older, uh, one thing I've noticed that has helped me become much more happy uh, and fulfilled is I'm kind of going back to a lot of the things that I liked as a child, go figure, you know, so that like sense of play and wonder is uh, coming back. So I, I just really appreciated that last one. Yeah. I mean, and it's absolutely true that that is what happens, right? You, you <laughs> more self-aware, less self-conscious, yeah. more interested in pleasing yourself yeah. than pleasing others. Right. And I remember, um, you know, and indigenous wisdom and green witch wisdom often I find are very, very um, braided, very akin. And I remember uh, Kiwe Dinokwe saying that, talking about early training of the children uh, and, you know, having like basically the various, um, the various like, uh, uh, you know, jobs, I can't think of the right word, right? The jobs that people do and having them kind of in a circle and the little children, like little, like two and three years old, you're going around and the adults simply observing what mm. they were drawn to. Oh, this one was drawn to the tools. This one was drawn to the baskets. This one was drawn to the medicines. This one, because it's true what you said when we are little, right? We do naturally reveal mm. who we are inside. And, and I found an old movie from when I was, I don't know, maybe I was two, maybe I was a little less and I'm running up to the, to the camera, right? It was a, I guess it was an eight millimeter then, right? I'm <laughs> running up to the camera and holding up and it takes up the whole camera face, a dandelion flower. Mm. And I thought, ah, so I have no sense of, of being like connected to plants or caring about it. And, and <laughs> maybe I was, you know? <laughs> I love that. That reminds me of when I was younger too. Also pre like fascination with, with herbalism, I would try to blow the dandelion seeds everywhere to try to help spread them. <laughs> See, you knew. And, and our, I guess bodies, so. our great truth tellers, our bodies really do reveal. And this is something I can just say as a really general thing. It just comes to me to share with you who are listening and here with us either live or later, yeah. right? Is learn to listen to your body because that is a very good barometer of what's true for you or not true for you. Like how, how something that said lands in you, does, how it feels, how it resonates. And the other gift of that is it helps us all to, um, to come home to being in our bodies, which for me was definitely a journey. I was absolutely more you know, in the ethers and spiritual and the old soul who would come in, right? I was right. like, oh, oh, I don't know if I want to be here. It's sort of hard and messy and people are mean and unity, you know, all that stuff. And and then, and I mean, I say it lightly, but it wasn't, it didn't feel light at the time, right? Yeah. Um, and I was in my head, right? I was in my head a lot more of the time than I was in my body. And, uh, and then the plants brought me home to being in a body, which it's like a really big thing that I had no expectation of at the time. And that is where joy lies. That is where like you can have spiritual highs, but sustainable joy comes when you can come home and really walk in your body on the earth so that you're physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual without any hierarchy among them. So if I was grateful to like if i had to pick one thing that i was the most grateful to the plants for over everything it would be this joy 
Mm. Love and that. health, health yeah. too, which <laughs> is a really big gift. Um, but yeah. living with joy was just, honestly, it wasn't something that I thought would be something I would have. Yeah. Um, in, in that real solid, sustainable way. And then I bet you found this too, Mason, because you're, you're, you're in touch with so many people that working, like learning to be in relationship with the plants then translates over to your relationships with humans. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And they become juicier too. Yeah. Yeah. I love the herbal community for that reason. That's yeah. a bunch of funky, cool, in touch people. Eccentric. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, multi-talented multi-talented artistic yeah, yeah. So, and, and fun and That's kind right. of fun. and and yet you know it's the, the full spectrum right the full yeah. spectrum so thank you for sharing all that so i i love how we you know brought up that word bibliomancy and i kind of feel like is that when you when you when someone purchases your book and, and gets it, is that kind of what you hope they do? Is they they flip through the book with the intention set, and then they kind of just sit with the phrase and kind of um, uh, just kind of do what we did just there. Kind of just how does this um, yeah? How do I internalize this? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my thought is that if somebody, everybody will just be true to who they are. Maybe they'll just read through the whole thing. Yeah. Um, or they'll use it in this oracular way that we're talking about as an oracle. And then I think that if there's something that really speaks to you that makes you stop or 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 weep or something, that maybe you're going to choose to pick a period of time you want to work with that, right? It could just be like a daily, but it could also be like, hey, for, you know, from spring equinox to summer solstice, I'm going to, I'm going to practice this and see what that brings to me or opens in me. Um, so I, you know, I look forward to hearing the creative ways that people do want to uh, either work with this book or, you know, how, how you want to read it is up to you, like getting it into your hands and you discovering what, what feeds you is, is up to you. Um, so I don't know that I hope people use it. Uh, as an oracle, yeah. uh, but I think it lends itself to that. And that, um, you know, a lot of these teachings, I'm not like standing on any, on any, any uh, pedestal. These are the practices that I have used, do use, and will always use yeah. because it's always a practice, right? Everything is a practice. And so I just hope, I just hope they serve people. And readers find the ways that even if only one page out of all of them or one illustration served to, you know, liberate some aspect of a person or wake up something or give permission, right? To give permission for some part to come alive, uh, then I'll be very gratified. So you use the word oracular. Do I do I re recall correctly on your one of your, one of your websites? You have like a giveaway for a tarot reading. If there's a pre order, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, sure. So if you are, so here's my thank yous. My thank yous are the following: If you pre order the book in the month of October, there's a form to fill out on my site, Robin Rose Bennett Books, that will then give you a link to download a beautiful. Um, booklet, a PDF, uh, a, you know, a digital booklet of um, of herbal recipes for meditation, dreams, and deepening intuitive wisdom. They're really kind of they're they're really good, beautiful variety of recipes, and um, and my apprentice designed the booklet. It's it's gorgeous. And then, in terms of what you just said, anyone, if you choose to review uh, a Green Witch's Pocket Book. And you, there's instructions written out, right? But basically, if you review the book by November 25th, you and tag me, let me know on Instagram, then you will get entered into a contest to win a free tarot reading with me. And I'll pick the winner on my birthday, which is November 26th, which is why you have until the 25th. So there's longer amount of time to uh, get entered into the tarot contest if that Please calls you and whether it does or not of course you know good reviews are super helpful too 
Yeah, please leave reviews all over wherever you purchase your book. So um, so you do have a new website. I want to say it's Robin Rose Bennett Books dot com. Did I get that correct? Exactly right. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Uh, you also have Robin Rose Bennett dot com. Yeah, and that's where people can come and uh, if you want to stay connected with me, you know, sign up for my newsletter. It's right on the home page. And just to say, my newsletter is not just like an ad. It's it's I really focus <laughs> worth your time on on providing valuable content. And then, you know, reminders of links like to a podcast like yeah. this. Right. Awesome. I'm on the newsletter. So go sign up uh, to the newsletter. Did you say where that was? Is that on RobinRoseBennett.com? RobinRoseBennett.com. Right. Awesome. Sweet. Well, um, I, I feel like I'd be remiss. Uh, actually, I want to say Asia, when I interviewed her, she said you might be a good person to ask this. So if you got time for maybe a couple more questions, um, okay. do you have any... Yeah. Do you have any practices or rituals uh, that you can share for developing a relationship with the moon? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Let's let's hear one. Yeah. (laughs) Um, uh, Amanda, my wife, would really love to hear that, too. So. Ah, uh, so I'm I'm just going to take one second and say, yeah, this book, the longest chapter in it is moon magic. Um, Okay, good to know. But yeah, for me, the, the practice I've done the most consistently in the last 35 years is um, is setting intention at the new moon yeah. and practicing that intention as the moon. Uh, so, so the, the pract- I also have a, have a moon meditation people can download, uh, from my site that can be helpful, but essentially it's this, and it's, it's written out in the book. Essentially though, it's simply this, go into meditation right around the time of the new moon, which happens every single month, right? <laughs> Ask to be guided towards um, something it's time for, for you, a practice, right? Uh, it could be an inward thing, an outward thing, and then, and then do it, right? And then practice that intention. And, and so it's a really cool thing because what you want to do is you want to, um, you want to grow this practice as much as you can. And it's only two weeks until the full moon. So you bring it to whatever degree of fullness it is. I'm going to just throw out a, any example. Let's say your intention is I'm going to speak up for myself. Let's just imagine somebody's challenged with that. And so you bring it to whatever degree of fullness you can by that full moon. And maybe you have com- you realize it's full moon and you've completely not done it at all. Or maybe you've ventured into it a little, or maybe you've done it and you've, you know, whatever, whatever, be kind, be compassionate. And then at the full moon to the new moon, your work, if you will, is to integrate like whatever degree you've put it out into the world, how has that shifted you? How are you embodying that? And then in a way, like with the moon, I like to imagine that as the moon is going from brighter to darker, that light is a little bit coming into me each each night, right? That, that there's less light there, it's because it's coming in and making that and I say, you know, practice the intention, something that you want to be working on, right? We could probably find a better word than working on, tending to. And then that will bring you all the way back to the next dark moon, right? The next seed planting time, right? So you plant a seed at the moon in your imagination, right? Then you let that little plant grow as much as it can up till the full moon. And then the second half again is, is embodying who am I having practiced this? I mean, once I did a kind of funny one that was very revealing to me, I, I, it's not a typical one for me. I usually do more inward, but I just think this moon, my practice is I'm not going to interrupt anyone. (laughs) How'd that go? (laughs) It was really telling how often I did. So it was a beautiful practice in listening. Right. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. Uh, You know, I've done so many over so many months and it's a beautiful. So the work with the moon, I just couldn't recommend it more highly because it helps awaken your intuitive senses. Yeah. And and your it's like the the solar is our outer um, connectedness. Right. Um, And the 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 lunar is our inner you know, our inner telepathic 
right connection with each other and all you know all things invisible really thank you for sharing and dear listener that's your homework so come up with an attention and when the new moon comes uh try this exercise out that robin rose shared um thank you um I, that was kind of a clunky way to end we probably should end with like the newsletter and all that stuff but dear listener oh, please go subscribe <laughs> So you had two questions. Oh, so, yeah. I guess I do. I guess there's still more that we could do, but um up to you. No, I think I think that's a great uh place to wrap up because otherwise I'm going to get you talking about plants and that might be a whole another hour. So, we will just forever, <laughs> right? Yeah, that's true. So, I'll just say that I have been spending a lot of time with a sacred old grandmother grandfather oak tree uh for council and that what I'm drinking right now is sassafras elderberry and black birch and it's delicious i'm drinking a mixture of linden and marshmallow which is also delicious gets me in the right headspace too beautiful okay we had to end with the plant that's right (laughs) well robin i'd love to have you on again i got through about half my questions so um yeah, you're, I just always love talking to you. You always bring so much wisdom. And uh, yeah, please go pick up Robin's new book. This will be released, I want to say, the week before the pre-orders or the actual book is finally released uh, around the October 24th mark. So thank you once again, Robin Rose. I uh, really appreciate you joining us on the Herbalist Hour. Uh, thanks, Mason. It's been a pleasure. And I really like talking to you. And <laughs> that our conversation has been helpful. Absolutely. Well, we'll talk to you later. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for watching today's episode of the Herbalist Hour. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more great herbal content, be sure to subscribe to our Herb Rally YouTube channel. Uh, If you enjoy these Herbalist Hour episodes and you'd like to join us live, uh, you can do so by becoming an Herb Rally Schoolhouse member. Uh, Learn more at herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. And if you want to get your first 30 days for free, use coupon code YouTube30 at checkout. So our Herb Rally Schoolhouse members get access to exclusive video classes, monographs, and a lot more more herbal community discounts um, along with joining these live herbalist hour interviews. So one more time, herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. Enter coupon code YouTube30 at checkout to get your first 30 days for free. All right, we'll see you in the next episode and take care.